Good morning, sixth graders. Miss Waggy here. And today we are going to be continuing on with finding the area of shapes. Before we get there, a couple things. You may notice I'm wearing glasses. No, these are not prescription glasses to help me see. They are actually blue light glasses because I've been working on the computer a lot, doing online teaching. They're supposed to help with the blue rays that come off of the screen so that um, they protect your eyes a little bit. So I've been finding that I'm having a hard time falling asleep at night. And it might be because of my screen time's been up. So I'm trying out these blue light blocking glasses. So uh, if you're wondering why I'm wearing those in the future, this, that is why. So I can still see, but I'm trying to help my protect my eyes from blue light. So if you're interested in getting some yourself, you can find them at a pretty good price on Amazon. Anyway, we're going to start today's lesson by actually with a math riddle that you then have to wait till the end of the video to find out the answer to. So I'm going to read it to you here. I'm going to make my life smaller. All right, here's the riddle. Add me to myself and multiply by four. Divide me by eight and you will have me once more. What number am I? Hmm. So I'll read it one more time. You can think about that throughout the lesson and then at the end I will reveal the answer. Add me to myself and multiply by four. Divide me by eight and you will have me once more. What number am I? Hmm. So maybe you can test out some numbers and see if you can solve it. All right, let's get to geometry lesson three. So this is gonna be working on the same skills that you did with Mr. Glennon in lesson two. Uh, the only difference is that the, no, the shapes are getting a little more complex, I guess. So we will talk about how to do that using a calculator just because we are working with decimals and we're asking you to find the area of composite shapes. So shapes that are made up of more than one shape. So we are gonna let you use a calculator. It does say up at the top, calculator allowed. Um, as long as you are understanding the formula and how to do it, then the calculator is really just a tool for you because we know that you know how to multiply decimals. So we're gonna look at number one. And right now I can see that I have a rectangle and I also have a triangle. So one thing that I like to do, and I think is gonna be something that you should do as well when you are solving problems like this, is to make sure you have every side labeled. That will make it easier for when you're trying to find the area of the different shapes. So right now I see this is 3.8 centimeters, this is seven centimeters. This side isn't labeled because it's giving us the whole distance of the whole side, but I know I'm gonna be finding um, the area of this rectangle. So I'm actually gonna label this side seven centimeters because it's parallel. Any s parallel sides, meaning they are directly across from each other like this, parallel sides are going to be the same length. So that being said, 3.8 centimeters here. Oh, I see this dotted line down here is parallel. So that means this side is 3.8 also. I'm not gonna write the units just for the sake of time, but we know it is 3.8 centimeters here. So we know because they are parallel sides, they are the same length. So now I've got my whole rectangle has all the sides I need to solve the area for the rectangle. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So area of rectangles, to solve that, it's just length times width. So area, I'm actually gonna put a little R next to it so we know it's the area of the rectangle, equals length times width. Okay, so my length is gonna be my seven centimeters, so my area, and it's, when we're doing this in our notebooks, um, I was talking about this in office hours, it's a great way or to keep track of your work, to just keep dropping down the equation, kind of like we did with order of operations. This will help you keep track of your area and making sure you're doing it correctly for each of the shapes. So we're doing the area of the rectangle, and we know it is seven times that 3.8. So the length going this way of my rectangle, or looking at this side, either one, seven times 3.8 will tell me the area of the rectangle. So we just covered that part, and we'll show how to do that on a calculator. But the part we did, I'm just going to lightly shade in what we are finding the area of. So we just solved for this part with that equation. Whoa, got a little crazy out there. Ignore that. Okay, so we're just solving for this part, the rectangle. So we can solve that by using our calculator. Fun fact, you all have a calculator in your Chromebook. 
So you can, if you don't have a calculator on your phone or one at home, you can go like this. If you click down here in the bottom left-hand corner where you see the launcher, you can click that and you can search calculator and it should pop up. And then I'm gonna move it over here to the side of my screen so we can look at it alongside what we're doing. I don't really know why it says rad, I guess because calculator's cool like that. So we're gonna plug in our equation to solve for the area. So I'll say seven times three, and our decimal is down here, 3.8. Okay, looks the same as what we have on our paper, so I'll hit equals. And that tells me the area of the rectangle is 26.6 .6 centimeters squared. Don't forget your units. I'm actually gonna write this in blue so this shows our area. So it matches the shape we shaded in. So area equals 26.6 centimeters. And it's always, anytime you're working with area, you're gonna have the exponent two up above your unit. So centimeters squared. Okay, so we found the first part of our area. That's gonna come back in at the end when we add it to the area of our triangle. So now we have to solve for the area of the triangle. I know one length, which it kind of got scribbled over here, but that length of this side is parallel to this one. So it's 3.8 centimeters. And then I don't know the length of this one. How am I gonna solve for it? Hmm. So this missing length, I know the full distance of the big long line all the way from C to D is 11.4. And I know the distance that from C to this dotted line or where our rectangle ends is seven. So in order to find that missing length, I can subtract seven from 11.4, which would leave me with, well, I know from seven to 11, I get four. And then I'm left with that 0.4 centimeters here. So 4.4 centimeters is my other side of my triangle. Oops. Okay, so I have 4.4 and I have 3.8. So I'm gonna use my area of triangles um, equation. Let me shade in. So we're finding the area of the triangle here. We're just kind of shading it in. And we use red to show that. So we know area of a triangle. The equation is, there's two different equations we can use one half base times height, or we can do base times height divided by two. I'm gonna to choose to use base times height divided by two for this problem. BH, and it's written like a fraction, BH over two. Okay, so we'll put, go ahead and plug in our numbers. So area equals, and we know the base, we'll say 4.4. times 3.8, 3.8, and that is all going to be divided by two. So the first step is to solve what the numerator is. So 4.4 times 3.8. So we'll plug that into our calculator and solve for that. So pull up my calculator again, move it up here so we can still see the, or over here, I guess, so we can still see, actually, we can go right here. So we'll clear it, so hitting that AC, we'll clear it. And then we're gonna do 4.4 times 3.8. Sixteen point seven two. So I'm going to go ahead and write that as my numerator. So sixteen point seven two. Since I'm running out of room, I'm going to make my just write divided by two like this instead of writing it like a fraction. So sixteen point seven two divided by two will tell us the area of our triangle. So I'm actually going to put a little t here. Remember, we're working with the triangle. So area of our triangle equals, we'll go back to our calculator. And now, now that you have this in here, if you hit divided by, it's going to just take the answer you had 
and you'll divide it by two to get 8.36, okay? So 8.36 is our area of our triangle, 8.36 centimeters squared. We always have to use that centimeters squared. Anytime we're working with area, you're gonna have units squared. Okay, so am I done? I've got two separate areas. It's asking me to find the area of the entire shape, A, B, C, D. The reason why it's named that is because A, B, C, D. So it wants to know the area of the whole shape. So I have to take the area of my rectangle and the area of my triangle and add them together. So I can do that once again in my calculator and I'm gonna pick a different color to write the total answer because I'm running out of room here. So actually I can squeeze it right here. So we'll just say area equals, um, so 26.6 plus 8.36. And when we put that in the calculator, that will give us our answer. So I'm just going to put equals and pull my calculator back up. I already have the 8.36 here, so I don't need to clear anything. I can just leave that and say 8.36 plus 26.6 equals 34.96 is going to be our area. So we'll go back down here, 34.96, and that is centimeters squared for the area of the whole shape. Centimeters squared. Okay, so that would be your overall answer for number one. Yee, okay, cool stuff. All right, moving on to number two. Let's get this out of the way. So number two is the same sort of problem. It has a little bit easier decimals to work with. So let's try and do that one quick so I can talk about some of the other problems. Um, okay, so same thing. First, we're gonna find, we're gonna label the sides that we're missing. So I've got three here and I see that the total distance is 4.5 all the way from D to C, but I just want to know up until this dotted line, I know this is also three because it's parallel with uh, the other side, A to B. So this one's three. And I know that across here from B to C, it's not labeled, but it's parallel from this dotted line, 1.4. So I'm gonna have 1.4 here. And then while we're at it, we might as well find the missing side of the triangle. So we have the same thing as last time. We know that D to C is 4.5, and I know from here to here, from A to B is three. So I can subtract three from 4.5 to find the missing length of my triangle. So 4.4 and a half minus three, I know four minus three is one, and then I'm left with just that half. So one and a half is the other distance of my triangle, for my triangle here, the base. So let's find the area of the rectangle first. So area of rectangle, let me change colors so it's easy to see the difference. So we're doing rectangle and we know it's length times width. Nope, okay, so length times width, which in this case is three times 1.4 equals three times 1.4. This one we can kind of do in our head. We know the answer is gonna be close, be a lot smaller than the ones we worked in the last problem because we know three times one is three and three times four tenths would be like three times four, which is 12. So we're gonna add on 1.2 to get 4.2, but let's double check it with our calculator. So I'm gonna clear everything from the last problem and do three times 1.4. 4.2, yep. So area of the rectangle is three, or sorry, 4.2. 
centimeter, or actually working with meters this time, 4.2 meters squared. Squared, okay. And then if we switch to our triangle, so area of the triangle, triangle equals, um, we can do the other formula this time. So one half base times height base times height. Okay, so we got to plug in our numbers. We have them here, so we can go ahead and do that. Um, so there's a couple ways you could do this. You could take one half of the base and then multiply it by the height. Or you can do, because multiplication, you can do it in any order. We could also do base times height and then take half of that, which I think is what we're going to do here. So we'll say one half, and I'm going to use parentheses to show multiplication on this because we know that anything outside of parentheses means we're going to multiply. So one half times 1.5 times 1.4. So really what we're doing here is we're finding, if this were a inside the parentheses, this would represent the whole area of a rectangle. And then we're taking half of it because we know that a rectangle can be made up of two triangles. That's where that formula comes from. So let's plug that in to our calculator. So I'm going to just go ahead and, so we'll just do the part in parentheses first and then multiply that by one half. So 1.5 times... 1.4, so that would give us, if we had a full rectangle, this would be the area of it, but we only have a triangle, so we're gonna take half of it. You can either divide by two or you can multiply times one half, which the easiest way to do that is with a decimal. One half is 0.5, so our answer is 1.05 meters squared. Five meters squared. Okay. So then to complete our problem, we just have to add them. Um, I'm not going to write it all out. So the total, 1.05 plus 4.2. We can do that in our heads. We don't really need the calculator for this. So I know that 4 plus 1, so 4 plus 1 will give me 5. And 2 tenths plus five hundredths, so if this had a zero, invisible zero on it, this would be 20 plus five. So I'm gonna have 5.25, because it'll be 25 meters squared. And that is it for number two. So those are the only two problems I'm gonna go over with you, but I do wanna give you a couple clues on um, some problems that you have assigned to you. So we'll go ahead and clear this. And move it down. So on a lot of these, you'll have similar situations here. So you got a, a triangle and you've got a, a rectangle. So it's going to be the same as like you just did. But there are some like this, number four, that are different. So if we were to draw in, you've got a triangle up here and you've also got one down here. So you could draw a line right here. And since you've got two triangles that are parallel from each other, they are going to be the same size. So you don't need to solve the area of those triangles two times. You can just take the measurements you have right here, one or 11.3 and 8.4. And technically, if we moved this triangle up here and attached it, flipped it around and attached it on there, we'd have a rectangle. So you don't have to use the triangle equation in this one. You actually have two rectangles when you put the triangles together. So you'll only need to do this times this, and this times this, and add them up, and that will give you your answer. So just trying to make that a little bit easier. Okay, last but not least, the answer to the riddle. So add me to myself and multiply by four, divide me by eight, and you will have me once more. What number am I? The answer is you are any number. What? Let's test it out. So I'm going to use the number two. Add me to myself. Two plus two, that equals four. Multiply by four. 
So I've got 4. Now I multiply it by 4. I get 16. Divide me by 8, and you will have me once more. So I have 16 divided by 8. Do I end up back at 2? I sure do. Let's try it with another one. Let's do it with 3. 3 plus 3. So add me to myself. 3 plus 3 is 6. Now I take 6 and multiply it by 4 to get 24. Now divide me by 8. 24 divided by 8. And I end up with 3. And you will have me once more. Mind blown. Crazy. It uh, spiked my hair up. It's all crazy like. All right, sixth graders. Good luck with the rest of the lesson. And you know where to find us if you need help. Office hours. We'll see you there.